I'm already saying without having balance tested this. Did they balance test this? Or like, I, I, I Hey, what is up, YouTube? Colst here. So it's that time again where the new expansion, Voyage to the Sunken City, has been announced. So before talking about the new cards in this expansion, I just want to go really quickly over all the arena changes that are from this patch. Okay, now we're done. So uh, let's get right into it. Let's get right into these cards. All right, so the first card we have here is Multi-Strike. We're going to go right down the list, class by class, for the 38 cards that are revealed so far. This one's Multi-Strike. One mana Fell Spell. Give your hero plus two attack this turn. They may attack an additional enemy minion. So it's a very weirdly uh, worded card. From my understanding, like, you do have the ability, like, you can hit the same minion twice, I think. You can also, like, hit face and hit a minion, but basically, you know, if you use this with hero power, for example, which you'd probably use pretty often in Arena, you can imagine, like, basically two mana multi-shot or something like that, or two mana deal six, but you're taking a lot of face damage, right? So it, this is a very good card for sure. It's just a lot of flexible removal at really just the cost of your life and you know a very small amount of mana so it's going to be a very good arena card it, in arena you're generally willing to pay you know a fair amount of life to get bored and that's what this does so it's a very 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 strong arena card next we have zillag of the abyss i believe it's pronounced zillag i think they had a tweet about that there's a seven mana colossal meaning i'll explain the colossal keyword now so colossal basically means when you summon it you get whatever it, it it tells you what you get but you get like a certain number of things and this is with a summon so basically the only difference with a battle cry is that if you you know if you were to cheat this out of your hand somehow summon it from your deck or something not actually play it you would still get it otherwise it's effectively just a battle cry and you you know as, as essentially battle cry you summon a bunch of these things and all these i i can like say is like a mini spoiler all these colossal cards are going to be fucking insane for arena basically um they're just like these really big late game win conditions. They give you way more than you're supposed to get for their cost. So this one is a seven mana three six. Star of your turn increase the damage of stocks by one, and each one deals one damage to a random enemy. And after you know, if they were to stick around, and this thing were to stick around, which is pretty unlikely, but if they were to theoretically stick around, then they would just you know eat your opponents alive essentially. Very thematic, I guess. But yeah, I mean. If you were to add all this up, essentially, you're getting like, you can't really do this, but you know, this would be like a seven mana, seven fourteen in stats, literally ultra sore. Like it's just a hell of a lot of stats and they're doing damage in a turn. Like it's just, you're getting a hell of a lot out of this. If you ever see this picket, basically, unless it's against you, Sarah, and then I don't know, you might still pick it, but we'll see. But that is it for Demon Hunter. Let's move on to Flipper Friends in the Druid category. This is a choose one for five mana. Summon a 6-6 six, six Orca with Taunt or 6-1-1 one, one Otters with Rush. It's worth noting that all of these are very cute and you do not want to kill any of them. But you will because Hearthstone is a brutal game and it forces you to do such things. But I mean, it's like, what, what can we say? Like, this is just... This is just raw overstatted. Like a five mana six six taunt would be one of the best five drops in the game. Five mana for six one one rushes is also just very, very good. This is just this is an absurdly strong card. That's really all there is to say. So yeah. We on to another absurdly strong card. We have Miracle Growth. Seven mana. Draw three cards. Summon a plant with Taunt and stats equal to your hand size. You know what I should do? I should probably uh, center this a little bit better, actually. Yeah, I should probably zoom in a little bit as well. So anyway, draw three cards, summon a plant with taunt and stats equal to your hand size. So from what I understand, the, the uh, plant counts after you've drawn the cards. So at like the absolute minimum, you're getting a 3-3 three, three with three card draws. And three card draws in Arena, you would probably say it was worth like at least like four or five mana. So if you're getting like a 3-3 three, three with taunt with three card draws, that's already basically worth it. But obviously the idea would be you get something much, much bigger. And at w which point you might be getting like, if you're getting like an 8-8 eight, eight taunt or a 9-9 nine, nine taunt, that's already worth seven mana basically. And then you're just getting three card draws. It's just, it's very, very good. You're going to be seeing this a lot. I do like the card that at least it's like, it's not, it doesn't feel quite as like overwhelming as like, um ultimate infestation did i think so it's it's an okay card but like it's going to be very very strong let's move on to the next one which is hedra the heretic seven mana four or five naga battle cry for each spell you've cast while holding this summon a minion of that spell's cost 
So if you were to play this on turn seven after, well, I mean, imagine you play it on turn eight after having already played Miracle Growth or something. You're getting an absurd mouse stats, but, you know, it's one of those things where any of these things in Arena typically that require you to actually, like, cast while it's in your hand, you know, there's a thing, the thing with Arena is, like, you generally want to be, like, playing things and, like, you just don't, there's a significant cost to actually having to, like, hold something in your hand to do this right. And you're not always going to have the big spells to combo with this. So this is one of those things where I think it's going to be inconsistent enough that it's not going to be like you know something that's like considered super premium but it's one of those things where i mean when it goes off it's the best card in the game you know so cards like this i do not like in arena just put it that way um but you know it's probably not going to be something you're going to see too much it's a legendary but yeah it'll be like hit or miss but when it hits i mean it'll you know win games by itself with that, let's move on to Kalak, I guess. I don't know how to pronounce that. This is a 7 mana 6 5, another colossal minion. Immune while you control Kalak's shell. What is Kalak's shell? Well, that is this thing where the thing that comes with it is a 5 mana 0 8 taunt. Death Row gain 8 armor. So basically, it's a fair amount of stats. And obviously, 7 mana 6 5 is rather understand, but it comes with basically gain 16 health effectively, you know. And um, you can't really like flame strike it away or something like that, right? Because this thing will be immune, so you won't actually deal damage to it. Um, and there's just like no way to really cheat it other than I guess you could silence the uh, you could you can't even silence the minion, you'd have to silence the shell, right? And th that would be get you a lot of value, but. Yeah, just very, I mean, very, very annoying. Like, the the amount of things you could do with this in Arena are crazy, because, like, it's just a lot of stats for them to get through, but also, yeah, it's like, you you just can't die once you play this. So, it's not, like, it's not going to be, like, Ysera, basically, but it's, it's very it's very good. If you have a slower deck, like, I mean, you, you couldn't have a card that kept you alive any more than that, essentially. With that, let's move on. Pasture to Hunter. This card is Raj Nijan. After you cast a spell, deal damage equal to its cost to the enemy hero. And this is on the 2 mana 2 3 body. So, again, like legendaries, you know, you don't see too much in Arena. And this card, I mean, I'm honestly concerned for standard, seeing what uh, Face Hunter is going to do with this. I mean, Raj plus double aim shot, 10 mana deal 16, by the way. But, um, I mean, as far as Arena is concerned, this probably isn't going to be the most premium card you're just looking for cards to do things that are a little bit different right but i mean it's not like you wouldn't take this if it was up against like terrible legendaries right we don't know what the rotation is going to be unfortunately but um and that will determine it but yeah it's not going to be like a super crazy crazy arena card but you know it's something you'll you'll probably pick sometimes next one we have here is twin bow terror coil four mana four four battle cry if you're cast a spell while holding this your next spell casts twice so this looks like something that you can actually ramp so you don't have to like play us i'm assuming based off this wording you don't actually have to like play the spell immediately you can actually just you know keep this effect which also means you can just cast multiple aim shots because why the hell not but um yeah it's just as far as Arena is concerned, you know, you aren't always going to have the spells again. You have to, like, you have to have enough spells. Like, you have to have actually cast spell while holding this. And then you have to have, draw another spell. And it has to be a spell that you actually want to cast twice. Like, there's a lot of conditions. So, I feel like this won't necessarily be that consistent. Again, it's one of those things that's very high upside, but probably just not the most reliable thing. But given that you're only really giving up, you know, you're giving up a stat versus a Yeti, it might just be worth it just for the chance it goes off. But again, like, probably not going to be the most consistent thing in Arena. We will have to see, though, in future reveals, maybe they print some, like, really big spells to come back and maybe i don't know like i mean they could rotate back in like you know call the wild or some some like really big hunter spells and that can completely change everything but you know we'll have to see for that we're moving on to mage now so the first mage card we have here is mech shark three mana four three mech not a good stat line if night captain exists but you know something you can deal something you can live with after you summon a mech, deal three damage randomly split among all enemies. So, I mean, again, like I mentioned Night Captain, but generally speaking, I mean, this is a, uh, 
mech mage might be coming back we're gonna have to see like it, based off of like the last rotation they might be bringing back a lot of mech synergy because you know they did the whole dragon thing this time maybe mech mage is going to be the, just the thing in arena in which case i mean this card will be absolutely absolutely busted but yeah it, i mean it's a vanilla stat minion with potentially massive massive upside so yeah it's it's very very good moving on next we have gifts of ashura two mana draw a card if you played a naga while holding this do it again so we'll, we'll have to see like it seems like they're printing a fair amount of nagas but they're you probably on average i think there will be an offering bonus lately at least we don't really know this stuff for sure but they've been doing a lot of offering bonuses to the most recent set so you're probably getting a fair number of nagas the thing is, is that you're not probably not getting a bunch of nagas from old sets so you know you'll have a few in your deck so there's a pretty good chance you'll probably be able to get two mana draw two. The thing with two mana draw two is like it's not some crazy upside that really makes it worth the loss the loss of consistency effectively. So this card will be okay for arena. I think it's not going to be amazing, but it'll it'll be fine because if you can get two mana draw two, draw two, you know that's nice, right? But it's not it's not crazy. Moving on to something crazy, we have Gaia the Tectonic eight mana colossal minion. After a friendly mech attacks, deal one damage to all enemies. And the two, it has a colossal plus two. The two things that are summoned are Gaia's drills, which are each two, three rushes. So essentially, this thing casts like basically like double swipe to the entire board. It's going to clear like almost anything effectively. And if you, I mean, if you have more mechs, it could be even better. But yeah, it's just going to completely obliterate any board. Twin Tyrant is. Sh is literally shivering in the corner, scared about how uh, much better this is than it, <laughs> essentially. But yeah, it's just, it's a lot of board clearing for, you know, you have to get to turn eight, but essentially if you live to turn eight and you have this, you're probably just going to stabilize because that's just a lot of board clear. It's not like an absolute board clear, but against like an aggressive board, like you're just going to stabilize off of that, basically, if you have more than like two health. So very, very strong. As with all the colossal minions, basically. So the next one here we have is Asheron Sweeper. Three mana, three, four. Put a sunken sweeper on the bottom of your deck. What is sunken sweeper? This is a three mana, three, four battle cry and three random mechs to your hand. Imagine if this exists with uh, Sneeds. <laughs> That's all we have to say. Hopefully, uh, hopefully not. But um, so you would say like, one thing I haven't talked about yet, because I don't think I've actually, we haven't had a dredge card yet, but there is a new mechanic coming in, which I'll mention now. Let me, let me find a card that actually has the dredge mechanic on it. Um, there is, the new mechanic is dredge, so something put in, being put on the bottom of your deck is actually accessible, because you have a way to essentially cast this kind of like, it's kind of like a tracking effect, but it actually pulls from the bottom of your deck, so there are actually ways to get these cards and the, some of those are going to be like on neutral so they'll be accessible in arena as well so it's not completely irrelevant so we're talking about it's a three mana three four at, with the, that puts a three mana three four that has three around mechs to your hand at the bottom of your deck so obviously just like if you have the dredge to combo with it an insanely powerful card but otherwise i mean it's a three mana three four and the mech tag is probably going to be worth something looking at the other stuff so you know it's going to be a card you're going to be picking a lot and if it goes off it's going to be it's gonna be nuts. All right, so the next one we have here is Spell Coiler. This is a two mana, two, three, again, vanilla stats, spell cry. If you've cast a spell while holding this, discover a spell. I'm gonna be honest, I'm just really terrified of anything that says discover a spell in Mage right now, just uh, with all the, you know, just everything happening right now. But, um, I mean, obviously, you know, this is a two mana, two, three with huge upside. It's a little hard to actually cast a spell while holding this. You're obviously not going to do that on curve very often. So you might have to like hold it to actually make that work. And then a two mana, two, three later in the game isn't going to do much. So you're paying a pretty significant cost potentially, but, um, yeah, anything that can discover a spell mage is obviously going to be extremely, extremely powerful. You can be picking this a lot. That let's move on to Paladin, and this is a this is a hell of a card too. The paddle of this set, I have to say already, is just nuts based off what we've seen. But this is immortalized in stone. Seven mana spell, holy. Summon a one, two, two, four, and four eight sea guardian with taunt. So I mean, this is basically like this is like clown style and clown 
you know, Clowns was like nine mana, summon three, four, fours. That was an incredible arena card, even if you never had any dream of corrupting it, right? I and mean, this is basically Clown stat lines. It's maybe a little weaker, but I mean, it's two mana cheaper. Like, this is just... Imagine if Templar Captain exists at the same time of this card. Like, you just play this into Templar Captain, they're just never killing it, and the game is over. It's just, it's just, this card is, you know, terrifyingly strong, basically. You're going to pick it every time you see it, probably. You'll pick, like, six of these if you were offered them. Like, it's just, this is going to be, like, super, super auto pick. Moving on to the next one here, another Paladin card, Seafloor Savior, 2 mana 2, 2, Balkry, Dredge, if it's a minion, give it this minion's attack and health. From what I have understand, they've done like really weird things with wording in this expansion, but um, they did say, Korra said on the reveal stream that this is just a buff, it doesn't like replace the stats, it's just a buff. So, you know, at, at the very least you're getting like a 2 mana 2, 2, you're getting a 2, 2 buff. To the minion that you're getting if you're picking a minion and you, you with the dredge mechanic you might be wanting to pick colossals you know if they theoretically were to exist there but yeah you're just getting like a pure buff out of this so two mana two two with a two two buff and also picking a draw at the very least is seems very strong so you're gonna be picking this i think a fair amount and especially if you have some of the synergy for it, it you'll be picking it always <laughs> So let's move on to the Garden's Grace. 10 mana spell, but not really 10 mana. Epic, holy spell. Give a minion plus 5, plus 5, and divine shield. Costs 1 last for each mana you've spent on holy spells this game. So that's going to be one of those things that's kind of hit or miss, just because you're not always going to have a hell of a lot of holy spells. You usually have some, but some holy spells are really cheap. Like a lot of them are like you know, like one mana secrets, two mana, two, three mana buffs, you know, stuff like that. But I mean, if you have the ship for this, then I mean this card is just unfair, right? Zero mana five five divine shield buff. Like that's just that can like potentially swing games and win you in a game on the spot. So it's like it's very, very powerful. But it's going to obviously depend on your deck because paying ten mana for that really isn't worth it necessarily. So yeah, very high. I will say though, like it's just very, very high upside. Because I think a 4 4 Divine Shield buff was a 6 mana card, right? You're actually, even with no synergy, you're not actually overpaying by that much. But uh, yeah, obviously making it 0 mana makes it uh, significantly better, I'll put it that way. So with that, we'll move on to the next card, which is a legendary Katori Lightblade. 2 mana, 2 3. After you cast a holy spell on this, cast again on another friendly minion. I've seen people on Twitter already complaining about how insane this card is going to be <laughs> for, um, for like standard and stuff. And yeah, it's going to be pretty insane. In Arena, however, I mean, it's going to be good, but um, you have to actually have enough mana to cast like holy spells. I could see like, man, it's like just with stuff like this, man, like. The the potential is oh my god like this thing's just gonna this thing's literally gonna be like a two mana twelve twelve or some shit like very reliable it's actually insane but um as far as arena you're just not gonna have that many holy spells so and you have to like have enough mana to play this have another minion on board and also play a holy spell like it's probably just not gonna pop up that hard all that often but there's obviously the potential is there it's a legendary you won't see it that much but. You know, it's going to be probably a pretty good one, but probably on average, not the most busted for Arena, at least. Next one we have here is Shimmering Sunfish. This is a 3 mana 2 5 battle cry. If you're holding a holy spell, gain taunt and divine shield. So, probably, we, I guess we don't really know exactly, but, um, you know, we'll see if they print more, you know, holy spells. They've printed two so far, and one. One of which, you know, the seven mana one you're going to have in your hand if you draw it and get this on turn three. Man, the, the page is a little buggy right now. But, um, yeah, I mean, a two five for three mana is, you wouldn't say good, but it's okay. And if you get Taunt and Divine Shield, all of a sudden it's just absolutely insane. Paladin is gaining a whole bunch of um these kind of cards that are going to allow you to play this kind of slower play style. I've always been kind of against playing paladin this kind of off board defensive play style because so many of their cards rely on you having board essentially but if they with all these cards that they're getting this and you know the immortalize in stone like it's really going to enable that play style quite a bit and yeah i mean this is going to be a good card you're going to pick a fair amount of the time but obviously it's not like you know super busted 
but it's, it's very good if you have the synergy for it. That let's move on to the next class, which is Black which is Priest, and this card is called Blackwater Behemoth, an 8-mana Colossal Minion with Lifesteal, 8-10 in stats, which is a lot of stats, and it comes with the Behemoth Lore, which is at the end of your turn, force a random enemy minion to attack the Blackwater Behemoth. So why is that important? You get an additional 1-4 in stats here, but essentially, you know, that means that you're, getting the, you're going to get the lifesteal immediately unless your opponent has a divine shield and, you know, they, they get lucky and actually, you know, <laughs> hit the divine shield. Otherwise, you're going to get the lifesteal immediately. So that's, this is just a giant minion with a lot of stats that is going to give you that guaranteed stabilization through healing you for 8 health or more if you could buff it theoretically. But yeah, so that's just um, probably like one of the less crazy colossals that we've seen but again like it's just a big thing that allows you to stabilize and gains you health and stuff so they're not going to be able to kill you through that and yeah aggro players are crying basically which means i'm crying <laughs> <laughs> all right so with this let's move on to the next card which is switcheroo three mana draw two minions swap their stats this seems absolutely absolutely bonkers to me because um i mean you could play this on like, I mean, imagine you could play this on turn four and then you might just imagine you get like an eight and a one drop and you can just play a one mana eight drop on turn four. Like it's just, it's absolutely crazy. Like worst case scenario for this is imagine you draw like two, three drops and they both stay three mana, right? And then you're just getting like an arcane intellect, which is maybe a little worse because you're drawing minions instead of maybe spells. But I mean, this is one of those things where it's just very, very little, very little cost and just literal win the game on the spot upside like i really like honestly i'm almost like please ban this card from arena i i don't want to see this in arena frankly because i mean you should probably pick it every time because it's such just crazy upside i like, it's just ugh. yuck um let's just move on <laughs> the next one we have here is serpent wig one mana epic spell, give a minion plus one plus one. If you played a Naga while holding this, add a Serpent Wig to your hand, which is the name of the card. So, I mean, it's one of those things where I guess you have to like continuously chain the condition, right? You'd have to like play a Naga, play this, play a Naga, then play this, then play another Naga, then play this. Probably not something you can pop off on super, super hard. But a one mana one one buff, I guess, is kind of good. I don't know. Like it's, I don't think you can have that many nagas to make, do anything really crazy with this. But it might be okay. It's just, yeah, probably not a super good arena card. With that let's move on to the next class here, which is Rogue. So Rogue has two cards announced so far. The first one is Cutlass Courier, three mana two five. After hero attacks, draw a pirate. So I mean that's. Uh, pretty unfair frankly to get like an, a, a statted minion that's you know potentially not just drawing one card the turn you play it but also drawing multiple cards it's a little limited though by like i mean if you had a dagger on two then you're not you know popping off crazy on tempo to be able to activate this immediately but uh still i mean the other limiting factor is that you're you usually just don't have that many pirates right so you may not actually have anything to draw but I mean, potentially a very, very powerful card and just a three mana two five stat line again, you'll probably pick it a fair amount. And something that's, you know, even if your opponent wants to kill it, they might not be able to deal like five damage to a three drop on curve is not easy. So you can just slam it and have it stick around and then get more value out of it. So it's a very, it's a very good card. Not crazy, crazy, but very good. Talking about very, very crazy, crazy good cards though, we have Bootstrap Sunkaneer here. 5 mana 4 for combo, put an enemy minion on the bottom of your opponent's deck. So there is literally, uh, what was the name of the card? Bile Spine Slayer? Like it was a 5 mana 3 4 combo destroy minion. This is like a silence removal, effectively, because it, it just puts it on the deck. It doesn't kill it. So you can even get around like death rattles with this. We don't know if like, you know, Proto Drake or something is going to be an arena, but like potentially this would be a way to eat like a Proto Drake completely. And you do put it at the bottom of the deck, which means it's essentially unplayable unless they dredge for it, which they might do. But, you know, it's probably not going to be super relevant most of the time. It's just like, you know, absolutely absurd. You have to be able to combo it. But generally in Arena, that's not too hard anymore. You tend to have like one mana stuff. So I, this is just like absurdly, absurdly strong. 
you're going to pick this card every time you see it. And we'll see if there's still an epic bug, because if there is, you'll see it a lot, and it's going to be very uh, annoying. <laughs> Laugh the pain away. Next, we have the sh we move on to Shaman. This is Piranha Poacher, 3 mana, 2, 5. At the end of your turn, add a 1, 1 Piranha Swarmer to your hand. So Piranha Swarmer, I don't know why there's five of them here. Oh, there's like different colors. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's a 1-1 one, one with Rush. And after you summon a Piranha Swarmer, gain plus one attack. So potentially you have the ability to, if this thing were to stick around. And again, like as I just mentioned, a 3 mana 2-5 doesn't always die immediately. It's pretty hard to deal with. And you just slam this and it might just stick around for a few turns. And then you're having like you know, all these things that synergize with each other, you could play like three of them at once and they would deal six damage at that point, right? Like it's very, very uh, strong. Or actually, I don't know if they buff themselves if you summon two of them. I don't think they would. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is just like crazy, crazy strong. Like just not being able to kill a three drop. Just, yeah, it's just very, very good. You can coin this out on coin like, there's some, I guess, like, one thing is that being able to coin out something like this could really equalize the disadvantage going second, so that's probably good, but otherwise, it's like, yeah, don't really like cards that punish you so much for just not having efficient removal early, but we'll see. Next, we move on to Scalding Geyser. This is a one mana spell, deal two damage with Dredge. So, this is the uh, first one that actually revealed that has the. Review that has the dredge mechanic, which is again like look at the bottom three cards of your deck, put one on top. Essentially, it's like a tracking effect, but you, you don't have to pay any mana for it. It's like a zero mana tracking. Is um there are some things again that we've gone over a couple things, and we'll see if there are more in the future. But there might be some relevance to the bottom of deck. But for the most part, I mean, you're just drawing a card. You're just choosing out of three options what your card is, and that's just really nice. And I do like that mechanic a lot because it rewards skill because it's it can be hard to know, right, what you need because you need you're figuring out what you need in the future. And long term planning is one of the big skill dividers in Hearthstone, I think. So like I do like that a lot. But uh, yeah, so but otherwise, it's just like one mana deal too. It's just a good card. You go and pick it a lot. It's not going to be, you know, super busted, but you know. And a lot of these dredge cards are not super busted, but you're going to end up picking them a lot just because, you know, they're decent cards. So it'd be pretty cool, hopefully. Moving on to Warlock here, we have Gigafin. This is the 8 mana 7 4 Colossal with a Battle Cry Devour All Enemy Minions, which I believe just it's, wouldn't be like killing them, it would just be like literally sucking them all up. And a death rattle, stick them all out. And the colossal is a six mana four seven taunt death rattle permanently destroy all mains inside Gigafin. So what that means basically is this is a one sided twisting nether. <laughs> and if they don't have like a silence or a removal, it, well, if they don't have a silence or a removal, it's just a, it's just a straight up one sided twisting nether. This is absolutely like terrifying for arena like this is just not like this is not remotely fair because some classes don't get to remove stuff and it's gonna be the same way in standard i guess but uh, yeah like this is uh this is terrifying um yeah i don't know I, I don't know what to say you're also getting by the way you're getting 11 11 and worth of stats for eight mana even if it literally didn't have a battle cry <laughs> like, it's just this, this card is disgusting this might be the best card to ever hit arena honestly like this is just <laughs> uh, this is not okay because and even if it dies immediately you're still effectively getting like a freeze effect you're getting like an eight mana 11 11 with a frost nova like that's just that's literally the worst case scenario like it's just what the f <laughs> like, i don't understand like this is so unbelievably just completely broken uh yeah this might be the best card to ever hit a, i i think i really think this might be the best card to ever hit arena let's just uh that's all that has to be said let's just move on so the next one we have here is blood scent Vilefin. four mana four four murloc battle cry with dredge if it's a murloc change its cost to health instead of mana so there's some very wacky combos you can do in like um, I don't know if anything's in standard, but definitely in wild, like, um, certain decks are going to like this, but mm, yeah, imagine you can actually like put this into the bottom of your deck and pull it out. That's, uh, uh, that would be a thing. 
Yeah, zero mana twisting now they're one sided, by the way. <laughs> yeah, okay. But yeah, just um overall though, like you're you're not gonna have Murlocs in the bottom of your deck very often in Arena. So it's like a four four with dredge. And then it's not it's not that insane. You'd be pretty happy if you could actually trigger the condition, but you probably just won't be able to very often realistically. So probably not super probably not super crazy, but you know. If you have if you have a lot of Murlocs, you have the synergy. We're yet to see really how much ability you actually have to like put things, you know, on the bottom of your deck. If there are ways to like cheaply discover, uh, you know, colossal stuff. If it is, I'm very concerned for the meta. But as, as of now, we don't know yet, so we'll we'll have to wait and see about that because that'll determine the power level of some of these things. Moving on to the next card, which is in Warrior, we have Black Scale Brute. This is a 7 mana 5 6 taunt battle cry. If you have a weapon equipped, summon a 5 6 Naga with Rush, which is the Fire Scale Berserker here. So, this is going to depend a lot, obviously. Like, I mean, Warrior is just kind of crap right now. I don't think they get a lot of weapons, but that could very easily change if Warrior ends up getting a lot of weapons very easily. We'll have to see if Warrior actually, let me look if they have any weapons revealed right now, because the offering bonus is going to impact that quite a bit, but right now they don't. So if they don't end up getting a lot of weapons, if they don't have weapons in the new set, this is probably just not going to go off that often, frankly. And it might be really hard to pull off because you have to like hold your weapon. But if you're playing like a three or four man weapon, for example, like you have to hold it till turn seven. That's going to be a little tricky to do, right? Because sometimes you just want to play it. So this is one of those things where it's like, it's really hard to say like whether this will be good or not. We really have to see. It's going to depend on what the rotation is and stuff. It could be, you know, a staple and auto pick because you just have all the weapons in the world. But, you know... Maybe we don't, right? It's just, it's too early to tell for this. We just don't really know. Very, um, you know, because it's very, it's high risk, high reward. And we just don't know how, you know, how high that risk will be. Let's move on to the next one here, which is Nelly, the Great Thresher. Seven mana, five, five, Colossal plus one, Battlecry, discover three pirates to crew Nelly's ship. And so it summons Nelly's ship, which is a five mana, two, six, Taunt, Death Rattle, add Nelly's pirate crew to your hand they cost one so <laughs> i'm just thinking about like this in pirate warrior it's like oh god um the fortunate thing is it's probably too slow to be played in wild but standard will definitely play this so yeah it's like so i mean just imagine like i mean the level of bullshit when you just get like multiple mr smites off of this it's just like <laughs> so unreasonable and absurd it's like oh my god I hope they have a, I don't know that they do, but I hope they have a condition where you can't get the same one multiple times at least. I mean, it's like, if you just get smite though, you just win. Oh my god, it's so dumb. And it's gonna be the same way in Arena, like, this is not just a standard thing, like, it's just, yeah, you just, you have no synergy and you just get smite and then it's just like, you just get like 20 damage worth of charge the next turn, like, oh my god. Yeah, I don't know how, I mean, it's gonna be really good on average too, because it's like, you're getting 7 mana for a 5-5 five, five and a 2-6 taunt, that's already that's already broken like that's already borderline busted and then you're just getting three mana discounts Ugh. and they're discount you're discovering them too Ugh. what why would oh i hope they ban this card uh, <laughs> this is not like what are they thinking with this oh my god i'm trying to be I'm trying not to shit on them too much, but like, did they balance, like, I'm already saying without having balance tested this, did they balance test this, or like, I, I, okay, let's just, let's just move on. So, uh, the next one, um, Crush Claw Enforcer, three mana, three, four, battle cry, if you cast a spell while holding this, draw a Naga. So I'm not sure if drawing a Naga, it's going to be pretty good, probably just because Nagas are from going to be from the new set, and then they're power crept, so, you know, they're going to be good cards. We'll have to see, like, what all the Nagas are going to look like, but I think, generally speaking, that's going to be a pretty good condition, and obviously just drawing a card is a very good condition. You have to actually have a Naga, which you might not always have, but, I mean, uh, the worst case is a 3 mana 3-4, three, right? So, you know, very, very, it's going to be very, very good. It's a little hard to actually cast a spell if you're going to play this on curve. So the on curve is probably not going to draw, but you know it might not prove good. We went to the next one, which is Baba Naga. 
four mana, four, four, battle cry. If you cast a spell while holding this, deal three damage. This is another one of those cards that is kind of going to equalize to the going second disadvantage because you can just coin this out and you're winning, <laughs> basically. Um, but yeah, I mean, it could be, a, again, it could be a little hard to trigger on curve, but eventually you're going to have a spell break, so you'll be able to do this and just might not quite be on curve, but yeah, just uh, incredibly, incredibly high upside. So very, very strong card. You're going to see a lot of it because it's a common. So it'll be very common in arena and you'll pick it a lot. Moving on next to another neutral excavation specialist. Four mana, three, six, bow cry, dredge, reduce its cost by one. So, I mean, in some sense, I mean, the fact that you're, you know, if you can get like a, if you can actually put a Colossal on the bottom of your deck and get to play it just one turn earlier, that's one turn earlier you get to win the game on automatically, right? So very potentially strong, but I mean, a 4 mana 3-6 is already pretty good. You know, it's a pretty good stat line. And yeah, Dredge is just really nice too, and a discount, so making it kind of like a 3 mana 3-6, just, just again, very, very strong card, you know. Pick it a lot, I think. We go next to Piranha Swarmer. So we looked at the Piranha Swarmer earlier. This is actually a draftable card. It's a one man one one rush after you summon a Piranha Swarmer game plus one attack. You're probably not gonna have a whole bunch of these, <laughs> so um, eh, it's probably fine, right? I mean, by itself though, it's worse than Stone Tusk Bore. You're you know not gonna pick it all that often, I would think. But you know, I mean, no one expects the Piranha Swarmer Demon Hunter though, right? We have a next to Amalgam of the Deep. 2 mana 2 3 Balcry, choose a friendly minion, discover a minion of the same minion type. So what's interesting about this, I guess you have to actually, I'm not entirely sure how this works actually, but I imagine you actually have to have a minion on board for this to work. So you can't just like, if you play this on turn 2 with no board, you probably just don't get the discover right. So that's kind of, uh, that hurts it a little bit, but I mean, a 2 mana 2 3 that it has all the tribes, which means, you know, depending on which hate cards are in the game could be really bad because it would activate all of them. But just being able to, get, you know, get a 2 mana 2 3 with a discover could potentially be very good. We're going to have to see, like, what the rotation is, but that's a very, you know, imagine if Sneeds is in again, right? Like, it would be, you know, <laughs> the uh, Engineer 2.0 situation, but yeah, potentially very high upside card will, uh, We'll have to see with what synergies are enabled with the sets that they put in them. Next one we have here is Sir Finley Sea Guide. This is a one mana one three Murloc Battle Cry. Swap your hand with the bottom of your deck. So this is a very interesting one. You don't necessarily want to do this. <laughs> um, it could go very badly. Uh, this seems like, I mean, obviously, if you have Colossals on the bottom of your deck, you put like a whole bunch of Colossals down there and you do this, then you're going to win automatically. But, you know, it's a little hard to pull off in Arena. Because there's a card we'll talk about a little bit later, where or actually, it's, I think it's the next card here, which does put Colossal Means on the bottom of your deck. Like, there's some potential there, right? Like, it could work, but probably not going to be super consistent. And the thing is, is that this is going to be, like, I think a pretty bad effect a lot of the time. Because, I mean, if you just, like, draw this on, like, turn five, you're probably holding on to, like, your late game that you drew early. And then you're going to just, like, put all your late game on the bottom of your deck and replace it with just completely random cards from your deck. Not not good. So I think this card is probably, honestly, the more I think about it, it's, like, it's, there could be, like, a very weird condition where it's good, but almost always going to be terrible. Like, never pick this. It's a legendary. It's going to be up against things that are better most of the time. So I think you just don't want this. And now let's talk about Ambassador Phelan. So this is a 4 mana 4 5. Pretty good. Balcry put three Colossal Mains on the bottom of your deck. So, I mean, worst case, a lot of times it's probably just going to be a Yeti. But, you know, for every dredge you get, up to three dredges, you just get three Colossal Mains, and Colossal Minions are fucking busted. So, yeah, you're going to you're gonna like this. Um, yeah, it's like essentially no downside, but potentially can win you the game. So just very, very strong. Probably, str like, these Colossal Minions feel strong enough that you'd probably be willing to just, like, if you have something like... Um, you know, something like this that has the dredge ability on it, you'd probably be willing to just, like, skip your turn two to not have to use this just to, you know, pull the Colossal Minion out because the upside is going to be worth it, I think. So, 
Yeah, just a uh, very, very high upside card at no cost, so very strong. Next one we have here is a card which is actually in the game already. I believe if you just log in right now, you get it added to your account. This is Blade Master Okani. For me at 2-6 with Battlecry, secretly choose to counter the next minion or spell your opponent plays while this is alive. So sometimes at worst case, it's just going to be like a 2-6 taunt, basically, right? I mean, they could ignore it, but they're going to want to kill this if they can, and they can't kill it with a spell either, potentially, if you counter a spell. And you can also, you know, completely counter Raid Boss Anixia. There's finally a counter to Raid Boss Anixia. They did it, chat. But, yeah, I mean, potentially very, very, very strong. It's, it is legendary, and, I mean, you're probably not going to pick it over a <laughs> Colossal Minion or Ysera or something, but, you know, it definitely, it definitely seems like a very good card. If you can counter something, you just kind of... You're getting, like, way too much value then. And the last card we have here is the Tuscar Trawler, which is a 2-mana, two 2-3 two, Battlecry Dredge, and it is a pirate as well, so that synergy could matter. It could also get eaten by crabs. Who, who knows? <laughs> we'll see. I, I bet the crab might rotate out, though. I'll have to see. But yeah, I mean, dredge is a very, as I said, I think a couple times already, dredge is a very cool mechanic. You, you essentially get like a zero mana tracking, and there's the potential for synergy as well. With the Colossals, that could just win you the game on the spot. But even without that, you know, you're just getting to, you can just play this on curve, get to pull maybe a three drop out of the bottom of your deck, right? It's just very, very good. So yeah, a solid card, not giga premium but you'll pick it pretty often i think but yeah that is it for this card review that is the 38 cards i wonder if they've uh <laughs> revealed any more while i've been talking about this let's see no nope, still 38 so that is it for today thanks all for hanging out like the video if you like subscribe comment all that stuff let me know what you guys think about all these uh things and if you want to check us out on twitch we will uh do more streams for this stuff Looking forward to this uh, rotation because, I mean, frankly, it can't get any worse than it is right now. So hopefully uh, the new meta will be fun and interesting. I think it will be interesting for sure. But yeah, thanks all again. We'll see you guys in the next one.